What's up, everybody? This is your host, Ben, and... Rainy, and we are oddly close to each other this time. Yes, here from the Journals of Awakening. <laughs> we are about two inches apart. We are having microphone issues, but we cannot stop bringing it. Exactly. So today we're going to talk about being comfortable in your own uh, existence. In your own human vessel. But, like, more than the vessel. More like, than the vessel? Yeah, okay. like the human... Let's, with the let's lessons, get into it. Yeah, the lessons you pick... The people you meet, uh, the story that's written for you, you know, the story you're following. Um, so, recently, I don't know, this is a real podcast, you know, so if you're on it, that's because you did something. I Did uh, something? Yeah, like you did something. You're going to be mentioned something good, something bad, something happened, you know, if you're in our lives in any way, you'll be mentioned. So, That's for sure. Yeah, so one of the people in or around uh, around our lives, you know, found out they were pregnant a couple months ago, uh, which is, like, great for them, I mean. Yeah, you gave them a shitty shout-out earlier. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> okay, um, great for them because they will be great parents. Yeah. You know, they will be raising uh, woke kids for sure, you uh, know. It's, I got it. But, okay, whatever, no, it's not, whatever. Yeah, 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 you can't. Raise an unwoke What's kid if you're a woke parent. My point is, I want to raise a woke baby. I want to be woke. I want to be. I want to go through the experience of pregnancy and birth woke because. Yeah, but you understand how how crazy that sounds. Obviously, that's why I want you to let me finish so you can hear me out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll fucking get to talk and speed it up. Let's okay. go. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I was pregnant with Connor, Ben and I obviously didn't know what like money management was or anything so we were all we moved all over the place it was really stressful he worked overnight etc cetera, etc cetera. that like wasn't necessarily the best experience or anything so this person is like pregnant and they definitely like are in a good spot to have a baby so it's just like you know we are too on paper and the reason why we're not is because we have uh we have a lot of emotions, because and we having, have a lot of kids. Because having a new kid is a bad idea. Yeah, because because we have a we have a lot of kids. <coughs> we have more than we can juggle. Yeah, exactly, and so it's like, it's like obviously that biological nurturing, <laughs> nurturing urge, uh, the motherliness, no. and it's also a, like a. An addiction to chaos, right? So, like... I think it's more like uh, you saw your friend get pregnant, so you want to get pregnant. All women do this. Yeah, I know, but I'm, like, mad about it because I don't want to want to be pregnant. Oh. Like, that's a very frustrating feeling when I know, logically, like... It's it, a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, but that's just because our kids are so young, you know, and the age gaps between them are ridiculous. To where they're all in completely different parts of their lives. And that makes it really stressful. Because one's going to be a preteen. And the other is just figuring out what it's like to try and fit in at school. And the other one's just a toddler. <laughs> you know? Like, figuring out life itself. So it's all different stages. So you can't have another one at a fresh stage. Because yeah. they're all going through stage. You have to wait until, like... One or two of them are out of the house. <laughs> I think the people should start having just one child. No, because, I mean... Maybe two, Connor, but that's, like, almost two. pushing it. Yeah. I feel like... Mo okay. One or two. I don't, like I'm, I'm not regretting anything. No, I no, love no. Yeah, kids, it, you know, this is, this is coming off really bad. I don't like it, the way it's coming off. No, the point is, we have we've got enough on our hands. I mean... We've got three kids. <laughs> no, we have five cats and a dog. That's more overwhelming than the kids ever have been. No, okay, no. The kids are not overwhelming. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the kids, like, behaviors or anything. It has to do with the fact that they're also going back and forth. Like, if they it were... sounds like... My what? bad. It sounds like you were getting to a point, and once again, I jumped. Yeah, exactly. Your stories are slow. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> jump. Jump for me. It's because he has, like, anxiety. I do. Um, the point was, is that, uh, another point I was making, <laughs> is if they were all under one roof with one schedule and one understanding of what we all expect from each other, it would be a lot easier. But instead, you have a different parent, uh, an overstepping 
boundary family like just a bunch of stuff that's connected so it's not about like the amount of kids it's about the situations regarding those kids you know imagine if my parents if my mom or my dad had another baby while they were putting riley and i through court and shit that's what happened to me yeah really what do you mean no, oh no not, yeah, yeah yeah you had the baby yeah uh, yeah, men get pregnant. I talked about this earlier. But <laughs> about the dumbass fucking scientist that's absolutely stupid. Anyway. Seahorses. <laughs> they got it backwards, guys. So, yes, I saw someone get pregnant, <coughs> but it wasn't my friend. If I mean, it's somebody that I wanted to really be my friend. Um, but I just feel like, I don't know, inferior, you know? So it's like. I sensed it from the very beginning. But what are we talking about with um, being comfortable in your own skin, your own vessel, your own... Is that I obviously only want a baby because I'm just not comfortable. Well, you know, like, the the kids left and then there's just, like, this big gaping hole, you know? Yeah, I filled it with you two. Yeah, exactly. There's this big gaping hole and the only thing I can think of to fill it is another friend for Connor. Because that's what I feel is missing. There's tons of kids in the neighborhood. I know. I know there is, and he does really well at school, but it's, like, it's, like, more than that. Like, him and Landon are, like, the same fucking person right now. Yeah. So I'm, like, well, if we have another kid, then, you know, he has another same person. And that's just filling a void, and uh, I have to be comfortable. It's toxic behavior, my friend. Yeah, it's, de- it's, uh, it's like, self-harm behavior. <laughs> exactly, that's what it is, self-sabotage. You're just trying to stir your pot. You don't care what happens to it, you just gotta stir it. Doesn't yeah, like, I'm not thinking of the over, outcome, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm not thinking of the boiling over, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just the idea of it. So, you know, it's hard to... When you're a mom, and I will say it this way, so fuck you, well, Caleb. one day I'll be a mom. <laughs> when, you're, when you're... No, when you're a mom and someone takes your kid... Okay, you're right. When you're a parent... I was gonna say Bruce Jenner did it. When you're a parent and somebody <coughs> just takes your kid, and then it's like you're not allowed to see him anymore, but you literally didn't do anything wrong... <coughs> <clears throat> that's called being a father in today's society. I know, 2022. That's why I was like, you're right. It is being a parent. No, it's it's. <clears throat> nope. I don't know. Not one dad that gets the rights over a woman like that. Only women pull that shit. <clears throat> my dad did it over my mom. Your dad took you guys. Yes. He took you and said, "You live with me. You cannot go back to your mother's house." Yeah, and then it got court ordered as well. <laughs> yes, mom, my dad won. The one that called the courts. What? No, my dad did, and he then, won. But how did, why did he call the courts if he already had you? No, because they got divorced, and it, it was, I don't know what it was. It was exactly. probably 50-50 or no, something. yeah, that's not right. That's not what happened. There's no way. If the parent has the custody, what the fuck would they take them to court for? Nothing. Because that's it was about, money? no, it was about, um, yeah, I, I wish I knew where it started. Well, you, know? you, should, you should know, yeah, because that's... That's a big thing to speak on and not know the full truth. My mom you know? filed for divorce, okay? My mom filed with divorce, but you, as you know, you have to file divorce with children because you have children. What, you, what so, you mean? And so, you have to file that way, yes, but you don't have to file at all if you don't want to. That's up to whoever the individual is to file divorce. Yeah, but my mom's always been that way. and But no, it also goes down to they were married, so... They shared. So they were just systematic debt. people. Yeah. yeah. They, my dad put them in bankruptcy, you know? So, well, yeah. The system so, did. I mean, it was your dad's fault they went in bankruptcy. Your mom should have had no say in it. But since she no, signed the mom, paper, it means she's Exactly. Reliable. And that's why yeah. my mom didn't have say in it. That's why marriage is absolute crap. My mom wasn't allowed <laughs> to use his money, and everything was in his name. So it really fucked her over. But anyway. Uh, so my mom filed for divorce, and my dad fought back trying to take us period you know but that's not what we want no i'm just saying who had you who enrolled you in school who 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 had you my mom had us enrolled in school so my okay. mom had me we so visited dad my dad took every, you every week and then called the courts because he was fed up with your mom's shit that's the way i'm seeing it from the outside my way. dad did not take us and not let us go yeah, my dad took like, us to court until they determined it was more like i want to see my kids right um he did see us so why why go to court then because he probably wanted to see us more yeah what? no yeah exactly that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying you don't know it's anything ridiculous i know i read it all it was just 
in my head, the timeline is fuzzy because I was eight. But my yeah. dad, instead of my dad, I think, took my mom to court for sole custody instead of letting me go back and forth. He wanted full custody. I well, think. that's stupid. That's yeah. taking you from your parents. That's not right. I would never do something exactly. like that. Exactly. We, we don't want that to I happen. completely leave it up to my kids. I tell them that every day, as I, you know. Yeah, and that that's it. And then the court would listen to what the kids want yeah. and determine where to go from there. And that's what I want. What's yeah. What's best for them. Exactly. I want a third yeah. party to ask them where they go and exactly. someone else say, Somebody to right. take them somewhere with nobody else's judgment and ask them. That's yeah. what I want. Don't, don't look at dad. Don't look at mom. None of that. Just, uh-huh. you know. Not no family friend or family. Exactly. So... I, when the kids left, I felt, I felt a hole that was large already get bigger. And the reason it was large already was because of the impending doom of them leaving, leaving, you know? So it was like, it just, it all went out the window and then Connor started acting up. And once the boys left, Connor really hasn't stopped acting up. He's also four, so it makes it, it's a really hard transition. Just like this podcast. (laughs) <laughs> For me, it just feels hard. I don't even know if I want to put this out there. Okay. I'm just saying. It's uh, Obviously, I come into it really tense. I've got things coming up, you know, that I'm not used to. And um, the kids just left, and they just showed up. You yeah. know what I mean? Out of the blue. No text, no call. It was yeah, beautiful. Like... It was wonderful, but it, it definitely stirs, you know, pulls and plays with the love strings, and it's fucked up. So I'm just sorry. I'm letting everybody know if this does stay up, I'm just going through it right now. Okay, well, I was just going to explain how I'm going to try and use art and reading and stuff and affirmations to feel comfortable in the situations that we're given and in my own in my own skin and my own head, but didn't realize that it was making Ben so tense. So, we might as well call it. We don't need to call anything. No, I'm just letting everybody know because obviously I've been a little bit of a dick, I feel like. So I just want to clarify what's going on with me inside. I'm not always this way. It's just, you know, all this shit. (laughs) Yeah. I shut down the last podcast idea. What was it? It was talking about uh, landing going to the hospital. Yes. And what she wanted then, to talk about it really get into it in depth because I, I just wanted to talk about it because everything that ended up happening was all good nothing bad, nothing bad actually happened, ended up it's happening it's the feelings that came up which are coming up right now I can feel them. you know it's the feelings that came with it that my feelings were so tied to the moment I can't look past it and uh, I prefer not to talk about it you know yeah and I'm just uh that's like a, I don't know, that's a cry about it subject, you know? Yeah, and obviously I wasn't there at the tensest moment, so I guess... I'm not discrediting. No, I know, I'm just, I don't think of there. it like that. Yeah, you drove. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, it was exhausting, but I just got to see it. I saw it as like a chance to see the boys, yeah. a chance to see everyone, a chance to prove that we're going to be there, period, no matter what happens. Yeah. And you saw it as like you're going head to head with the woman who has your kids. Yeah. And one of them's sick. And it, yeah. So I get it. It was a lot. And I'm still decompressing. I mean, I, I mean I, I'm fine on the surface, but when you bring it up. Okay, but you know? they showed up yesterday. But I, and that was really exciting. I like leaped out of the bed because we were just I chilling. Remember, yeah. And Connor came in, and he, he said, the Landon's here. here. I'm He's like, so what excited. the hell? How I is hugged, Landon here? And I hugged Landon so tight. <laughs> I and did, I too. Guess, <laughs> I mean, I just squeezed the shit out of him. And I, I think, squeezed Jason, too. I know he hates hugging these I know, days, but I did. Yeah. I was like, you're hugging me, boy. I well, I just you. know how excited Landon must have been to come. Yeah. Like, I know Jason's excited, but, you know, Landon... It's like all he wants is to be here. And no, I guess no, Jason's really starting to open up. Open up. That's why he's going to come on the 19th. Yeah, that too. He decided he wasn't going to take the risk of not coming here, so he's going to come. But I'm glad he really analyzed it, he obviously. Did. yeah, he took his own time. I mean, 
we're took not, him like a week. We're to not decide. gonna lie. Like we definitely have conversations about his mom. Like that's he's not dumb. And so I I made a plan. I said I will meet you in the at this place on this day, but that is as far as I can go because my car can't handle it. And he said, that sounds like a good idea. So that right there <coughs> shows that I'm trying. However, yes. his mom wasn't giving him the same effort. His mom did not care that he wanted to go or that he wanted to meet me. His, yes. his mom was very wishy-washy and he real and he realized it enough yes. to say, I don't need a white I'm Christmas. I need risk. to go to dad's house. Yeah, I'm just going to go to dad's. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and hopefully it snows here. No, but know. that was just, it was a really smart, calculated decision that he made. I can see right through it. I can see his thought process, you know, and I think that's insane for... And this boy's got crazy listening skills, I'm telling you. Yeah, like, he's not dumb. Nobody nobody would even talk about what they were doing for Christmas. So he was no. like, well, I know what Dad's doing. And you so. know what? Jason's not going to listen to this until he's older, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. But we call him the Russian spy... Yeah. <laughs> and that started way before the Russian Ukraine I know, so deal. Can't just can't, like, say that anymore. I'm just saying, yeah, you can't say it anymore. He's but just we a spy. We would call him that, yeah. <laughs> it's ironic, you know. It's, it's like, <laughs> because, like, that's what they would do in a movie. But he would listen to everything we ever said. Ever. Like, he'd be in the other room and he'd come out and be like, no, mom didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I just think, uh... So yeah, I think that he his he really went through the thought process and he and he just said uh, I'm coming on the 19th by the way and he didn't walk me through how he got there he just said it and then I just put the pieces together because at the hospital they were very unsure and Jason called his mom out in front of everybody because he wanted an answer on whether he'll meet me in this place or not yeah. and she couldn't give him one so yeah Landon did the same thing with the uh, cell phone mom write down dad's email. Is what he said. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh, yeah, my email but it's just, it's, is my name. It's, it's so funny. I felt so awkward when Jason said, let's talk about Catalina. I don't know why I felt awkward. It should have been her because yeah. I gave the idea, you know? He yeah, was no, putting I, her on the spot for me. She, she should never block. I just your like kids. that the boys have never been afraid to speak their minds no, or call their parents spoken. out, you know? Yeah. They, they just don't do it more because we're not in the same room anymore. But this I'd time say, they really took the opportunity. Yeah, I'd, yeah, they, they get the outspokenness for sure. Oh, yeah, but we allow it. Yep. We allow oh, yeah. them to say what they need. You speak, you speak your mind in this house. Yeah, it, it can get you in trouble depending yeah. on what you say. But, but that's the consequence that's you learn, and bro. you know. But, you know, you're not going to. You stay quiet, nobody's going to know, you know. I don't know what's bothering you, you know. You don't yeah, know it's bothering exactly. me because you didn't try. You know what I mean? So at the beginning of the podcast, what I was trying to say is that everybody's life looks so good on the outside. I have no idea what people's lives are like on the inside. But on the outside and, like, in people's pictures and the way people talk, you know, it just sounds like everybody has it all. And I feel like, I feel like we're, like, the only one struggling. Like, why I can't just, we just, like... Feel I really relaxed don't and free. That. No, because it's not true. Everybody's yeah. got their own battles. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That actually exists, you know. And everybody's got obviously battles. we've got some complicated ones because you have kids with somebody who you're right. not married to. Right. Like that's but just there's gonna... there's people out there with kids to sixteen different people, and some of their kids are special needs, and some of their yeah, relatives are fucking. Everybody's got you know their I mean? own like, struggles. You never know. Yeah. But I also I just feel so like bad that I'm letting myself feel that way like why can't I feel full <laughs> you know yeah. like am I allowed to feel empty or I'm pretty sure I've been you know it's been yeah, a couple I months think, I'm exactly. like I think you're allowed to feel exactly how you feel it's I mean who's difficult. to say you can't who's to say that that's not right because the feeling of happiness and security is such a good feeling yeah, you know yeah. it's so good to feel like you don't have to the worry the serotonin huh yeah, exactly. Like, that's the best feeling. And that's why I decided today, like, I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of feeling like I have to compare myself to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to try and, like, do affirmations, you know, and listen to music that's going to make me feel good. So that should be the the goal. But I don't want to be, like, toxic positive about it. No, yeah. It's so hard to find a it, balance. It is toxic positive. That is a thing. If you go around boasting about being positive, people think you're fake. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I yeah, just, it's like, obviously, I, you're I want to keep it to myself. You, you got to be real. Yeah, be real. But I don't Experience know. every feeling as it comes. Like, I want to get off social media, but then that feels like 
I need to find the balance. Like, uh, I can't just rule something out and decide that's going to fix my life. We'll just stick life. to uh, five trailer park cats. So just stick to that and just specific, like, fucking analyze it, make it beautiful, edit pictures, work on thumbnails, make that your life. The comments, the people that are involved in that, like, make them your friends. Ooh. You know what I mean? Your fans. That's, that's actually that's kinda, a really good idea. That's kind of what I do with YouTube. My, this, those are my fans. Those are people that actually like who I am. So, like, I don't feel weird around them because I know they like me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, no, that's a really good concept because I'm just thinking... Okay, so here's one of my problems, though. I stay on Facebook because I get information about the town. Okay. I like to know what's going on. Like, right. bef- like when it's happening you know i don't want to wait and hear about what's happening you know <laughs> yeah that sounds like something you gotta work on no i know <laughs> i it's, and it's, it's that's the only reason i'm on facebook is for the town and it's like but hmm. you're right if i could just like get the paper we got a paper or oh i know mm-hmm. i'm logged in to my store's facebook maybe that's just the only facebook i use you know well then, then you might make it your own kind of thing yeah, then you true. might, yeah, get a little too involved in your store's Facebook and it becomes yours. You yeah, know what that's I mean? true. You, but, don't, you don't want to do that. But uh, <coughs> definitely, like, because Facebook and Instagram are the easiest apps to find yourself comparing your life I don't to. have either one. Yeah, I know you don't. And you don't compare your life to anybody close no. enough to you, you know? <laughs> Just other YouTubers. Mr. Beast, you know, I want to be that big. That's all I compare myself to. Yeah. <laughs> No, I know, and that's really cool. Like you just have this, this dedication. You, you fill your hole. You fill your holes with things. Yeah. But like good things. Like I don't know. I guess maybe you spend a lot of your life filling it with bad things. And I'm only 24. Maybe. And I haven't figured out how to just like find something and focus on myself enough. Well. To. You know how, Mr. Beast is a huge PewDiePie fan. Yeah. I could be like the next saga, you know. <laughs> oh, right? The Journals you, of yeah. Awakening is a huge Mr. Beast fan. That's funny. <laughs> like, I want to... It's I like just, Eminem and Dr. Dre and... I just want to make art, <laughs> but I'm bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's all in the eye of the beholder. What are you talking about? Art, in my art eye, art. Yeah. I'm bad at it. It's not the kind of art I want to make, but it is. Okay, that's the thing. It's the ex- I want to make art that my hand just moves and I don't care what it looks like. So I make that art and then I just get frustrated because it doesn't look like anything. <laughs> I think it looks great, especially the first one. I, you haven't finished the second one, so I we don't know yet. I haven't finished the first one either. Really? I, well, it looks good. It's got the nice... Uh, she did water... What is it? Watercolors? Yeah. Watercolors with uh, Sharpie. Sharpie art. So it's... My grandma's not supposed to know that, so she better Yeah, well, she don't know any of that. <clears throat> Exactly. It's uh, we're talking about this old shit, yeah. All this uh, old stuff you're using <laughs> until we get our cool gifts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the old stuff. Anyway, I but yeah, I just want to. I just want my hand to move on, on the canvas and like, explode it into color and just kind of have a purpose and, you know. And who told you that's how art works? Because that's how it feels like. It feels like I have a lot of emotions, and I want them to flow out of my hand, you know? Yeah. But then I think, well, maybe I should try painting a cactus. You know, I've got a tattoo of a cactus. You know, I just... Interesting. And I think of realism, and I get mad when my art doesn't look well, like Well, because realism's real. a really hard one. Yeah. I know. That's a hard one. And that's I hard in tattoos. Do realism. I can't even do 3D. I, can't, I don't even know how to do that. You know, you know how people draw cars and they look like they're like whole cars. Yeah. I can't do that. Mine looks like a stick figure. Mine car, does too. You know? <laughs> so painting's really hard because I just love the colors and I love to be able so you to love do something. Painting. It doesn't <laughs> mean you have to paint things. You know what I mean? You could just paint illusions, paint portals, paint mystical lands you know full of fucking diamonds or shards you know just just let your imagination go crazy exactly yeah not make it into something yeah there should never be a goal at the end of an art project that's how i feel yeah but it's like why why can't that mushroom look a little bit more 3d you know well, I'm not sure. I, I would assume a little more shadow, uh, right? But I don't know. But that's not like... No, because I... 
Like there's, I guess there's shadow on that. There's not like shadow on that, is there? Yeah, there's shadow. Shadow goes a long way with art, I think. You really think, even yeah, like look, in a painting look, even, like that? Even under things like this, there's shadow, which gives it dimension. Shadow gives dimension, right? But anyway, we're off on a whole new can of worms. The but point is, this has been a really fun. Program. The point is, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to fill my holes. <laughs> but, oh man, <laughs> you did not, you're not trying to end it on that. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm trying to fill my holes. I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it worse. I'm gonna fill my hole with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the vibe gonna, alive forever. I'm gonna find that self fulfillment because I feel oh, yeah. like all I really need is. Like, hey, this is the journey, right? Yeah, like this is I, our journal about our journey. You know I what want I mean? to be able to have an adventure <laughs> by myself and be fully fulfilled and not share it with anybody. You know, just exactly. Like I don't. You need gotta to figure share. out and talk to within. You know what I mean? You got. Yeah. It's not weird. It's. I don't it's know. science, bro. And I just have a problem. I have a big mouth. I feel like I have to talk to everybody about everything. But, Keep talking you know. about your holes. Can we end it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> um, Ben's got a live to do. I do, and I love you very much, I everybody. Peace. <laughs> Peace.